When the U.S. Army entered World War I, it adopted a new organization for units deployed with the American Expeditionary Force, or AEF, different from units deployed elsewhere. These units were to take notes from the French and British rifle platoons of the time, which did away with every man a rifleman and introduced specialized weapons at low levels. Rifle companies outside of the AEF, such as units still stationed within the United States, were organized entirely differently. First, non-AEF companies were 40 to 60% the size of AEF companies. Second, non-AEF companies consisted only of riflemen without any specialty weapons like automatic rifles or rifle grenade launchers. And third, non-AEF companies were still assigning squads and platoons based on height without any real consideration for specialization. The AEF platoon was a far cry from this comparatively primitive organization. First, we're going to cover the theoretical organization of the rifle platoon at full strength. This video is heavily based on Battalion, an organizational study of the United States Infantry, a Marine Corps working paper published in 2001. The United States Army Rifle Platoon, as it was deployed during World War I, consisted of five distinct elements. One platoon headquarters, with the platoon leadership and messengers. One hand bomber section, outfitted with men trained to use hand grenades. One rifle grenade section, outfitted with men armed with rifle grenade launchers. One automatic rifle section, outfitted with early automatic rifles. And one rifle section, outfitted exclusively with riflemen. Now in practice, the platoon commander was expected to modify the organization of his platoon to handle a given task. We will get into that and other practical modifications later in the video. The platoon headquarters was headed by the platoon commander. He was a grade of lieutenant and armed with a pistol. For the purposes of this video, we are displaying pistols as M1911 semi-automatic pistols because we already had one drawn up, but several models of Colt and Smith & Wesson revolvers were also in use. The platoon sergeant was the senior most of the platoon's three sergeants and acted as the platoon's second in command. He was armed with a rifle and a pistol. It should also be noted that we are displaying rifles as M1917 Enfields. The initial deployments of AEF troops would have had M1903s as that was what was available at the time, but by the end of the war, 75% of rifles in US service would have been M1917 Enfields, and they were the more common rifle during World War I. The remaining four men in the platoon headquarters were messengers who were privates and armed with rifles. The rifle section consisted of 17 personnel, all armed with rifles, led by a sergeant, and was broken into two rifle squads. Each squad was led by a corporal and had seven riflemen. Of these, three were to be private first classes, and four were to be privates by summer of 1918. The rifle grenade section consisted of nine personnel. It did not have a section leader. Rather, it would be split into three teams of three men and would be task organized by the platoon commander. Each rifle grenade team was led by a team leader. Of these, two were corporals and one was a private first class. The team leaders were armed with rifles and rifle grenade launchers. In addition, two corporal team leaders would have been also armed with pistols. Each team had one gunner each, ranked a private and armed with a rifle and rifle grenade launcher, as well as one ammo bearer, each armed with a rifle. The hand bomber section consisted of 12 enlisted personnel. Like the rifle grenade section, it had no leader and was split into three teams, however with four men instead of three. Each team had a team leader. Like the rifle grenade section, two were corporals and one was a PFC. The corporals were armed with a rifle and a pistol, while the PFC just had a rifle. Each team had a dedicated thrower, a soldier trained to use hand grenades in theory, and was armed with a rifle and a pistol. The teams also had one ammo man and one scout each, both armed with rifles. Rounding it out, the automatic rifle section consisted of 15 enlisted personnel and was the core of the platoon's firepower. The section was led by a sergeant armed with a rifle and a pistol, and divided into two squads of seven men each. Each was led by a corporal squad leader, also armed with a rifle and a pistol. Each squad was based around two automatic riflemen of the rank Private First Class armed with automatic rifles and a pistol. The standard issue automatic rifle in US service at the time was the French designed M1915 Shosha, rechambered from 8x50 rimmed to 30 6 For units serving alongside the British, pan magazine fed Lewis guns would have been used instead. By September 1918, a small number of units would have received the American made M1918 BAR, although this would have been a rarity. 
Officially, each automatic rifle squad was only supposed to field one of its automatic rifles in combat unless there was terrain that would force a half platoon to split up. In practice, however, the automatic rifle squad would fight with all of its automatic rifles available as commanders weren't too keen on giving up the firepower that they had. Each squad also had four ammo men of the rank private armed with rifles responsible for carrying extra ammo for the BAR men. In practice, the platoon would not actually enter combat with this type of organization. Rather, as per doctrine, the platoon commander would divide the platoon into seven squads of six to eight men each, grouped into two half platoons. Typically, the section leaders of the rifle and automatic rifle sections would lead these half platoons and cross-attach their rifle and automatic rifle squads between each other. An example reorganization would have been two half platoons at the highest level. Each would have an automatic rifle squad and rifle squad from their respective sections. Three additional squads would be formed by combining the hand bomber teams and rifle grenade teams into mixed squads. The platoon commander would have the discretion to organize their platoon as they saw fit, however this proved to be complicated for inexperienced officers. The situation for the army's small unit leadership was not ideal during World War I. For marine units in the AEF, infantry officers were the cream of the crop. This was not so for the army, where duty as an infantry officer was considered undesirable and most lieutenants who had been in the service pre-war had to be promoted to captain to meet wartime demands. This, combined with the awkwardness of the organization and the realities of the battlefield, caused some deviation in practice. Although composed of 58 men at full strength, the average US Army rifle platoon was undermanned at about 40 personnel by mid-1918 due to combat casualties, the 1918 influenza pandemic, and typical manpower shortages. Thus, changes had to be made in the field by junior leaders to compensate. Generally, the automatic rifle section would be maintained at full strength as it was the platoon's main firepower. The hand bombers would act as riflemen that could fill gaps in other sections and act as replacements, with the non-tactical job of throwing hand grenades being shifted to others in the platoon as a secondary skill set. The rifle grenadier section could be reorganized from three teams with two rifle grenade launchers each, to two teams with three rifle grenade launchers each. Extra riflemen would then be added to these teams to create an additional two squads. Ideally, each half platoon, still led by the rifle and automatic rifle section leaders, would consist of one automatic rifle squad, one rifle squad, and one combination rifle grenadier and rifle squad each. This has been the organization of the US Army Rifle Squad as it fought during World War I. Thank you all for watching and thank you to our Patreon contributor. If you want to get credits in our videos, access to exclusive wallpapers, and an invite to our patron-only Discord, you too can become a patron on Patreon. Link for that is in the description. And lastly, make sure you subscribe so you are first to know when we upload new videos. Thanks again, and see you all in the next one.